Greetings, everyone. My name is Atterville, and I welcome you all to my blind, live let's play of Mega Man Ram, an 8-bit Mega Man Classic fan game developed by J8Bit. It was released a few weeks back, so I'm excited to try it out. We have a selection of 6 RMs this time. Fraction Woman, Premier Man, Spiral Man, Sickle Woman, Sukako Woman, and Chimera Man. I'll start off by going after... Spiral Man. And as this is a blindness play, I apologize in advance for any silly mistakes or false assertions I'll make. This was developed under the Mega Mix engine, and I'm happy to see more fan games use this engine. So let's see, we can jump, shoot, slide, but our charge shot's a bit different. What does the T-Phaser do? Let me try it on this screen. Ah, so it's like the Rush Coil. Except I can use it in midair too. That's cool. Oh neat, an explosion gimmick. That propels Mega Man in the opposite direction. Fair introduction. This time, I don't activate them. You may choose which RM to go after, Spiral Man. Oh neat, respray spinning tops. So it's called a teleport phaser. Something's to the right, I just know it. And because it's a Magmix engine, sliding through these patch is so much easier. In Mega Man Maker, for example, you have to be almost exact in order to slide through these paths. First dead, I set off at the wrong angle. Also, I forgot to change that. I want the pickup effect to be instant. And my jump didn't activate because I was too far. That's fine. We'll get there.
Ah, uh, did it too early. So we have a limited life system. I need to get a hang of this last one. I got on my first attempt, but now I'm having trouble with this. That's much better. Everything else at the stage is pretty straightforward. Plus, I already have that E-Tank anyways. Hang on a minute. I already have 220 bolts? What? Each one of these small bolts is actually 16 bolts? I know I died several times, but that still seems excessive to me. Here's Spiral Man. Outside that one bomb jump, this stage was pretty straightforward. I didn't even take any damage from the boss. And by defeating him, I get... The Data Spiral. No demonstration? Okay then. Choose who I should go after next. Sukugo Woman is a victor with three or four votes. I think Sukugo is Japanese for Matt. Looks neat, but requires quite a bit of weapon energy. It can multi hit them as well. Respray Brightman platforms. I'll be paying a visit to the shop after this level. Was that a spiny Joe? I see something up there. What are you? A giant shock caterpillar. This elevator is a lot snappier. Um, I can't reach the ladder. 
Am I missing something? Not unless I use this. Time for Suko Woman herself. I don't see what our stage has to do with anything with Matt, however. I was expecting something more along the lines of Binary Man, or Sheep Man. She was also a pretty straightforward boss. She didn't really need to take 3 damage from the full charge shot. 2 would be fine. And by defeating her, I get the Parabolic Charge. Choose who I should go after next. Meanwhile, I'll pay a visit to the shop. So, extra lies, E, W, and M tanks, a Pierce Buster, Rocket Buster, Energy Saver, and Slip Booster. I wanna have this. I want dashing. Let's get the Rocket Buster too. That sounds fun. Fraction Woman is a victor with 4 or 5 votes. I recognize this track. I like this effect. So we basically have dashing now. This is pretty much a very similar effect to the one in X4. Nice. The Rocket Buster deals double the damage of the regular Buster, but I can't charge it. That's cool. I cannot raise a Lord Angle, however. Even has a grab buster like effect. The spine analogs to the game. The Pierce Buster can probably destroy them, along with the explosive slash slash weapon of the game, if it has one. You know, at short range, the data spiral is pretty powerful. Not close enough. That user wasn't kidding. The Rocket Buster packs a wallet.
It might as well be a special weapon in its own right. First, probably seven. This is the same music track played in Neapolitan Man stage in Magnol 2. That's why I recognize it. I forget what your name is, but you originate from Mega Man 11. Probably a checkpoint room. Ah, a respray rush bike. I wonder how the Magma Tree levels will use this. Mega Man 7. Unlike Sugo Woman, this stage actually has something to do with traction. We have several vehicle based enemies, along with oil on the ground. I will, I said that. You aren't immune in that form. For my first battles against these RMs, I'll only be using the Buster to give them a fairer shot. And by defeating him, I got the spin drift. Next up is Creamery Man. Looks like Napalm Man got a new job. I won't use the Rocket Buster that much in the RM stages. It kind of feels too powerful. Let's take the upper route. Are they throwing ice cream at me? They are, and it freezes me. Wait, 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 hang on a minute. Look how many balls I get by defeating these enemies. Once I can defeat them.
Of course, now they're deciding not to drop any bolts. Okay, I have 20 bolts now. Now I have 22. These bolts are only worth 2, but the ones in Spiral Man were worth 16. What's with the inconsistency? Is that a devil? Aw, oh, it's an ice cream devil. Cute. This game does have a plot, but it's not in the game itself, it's in the README. I'll be adding in the story in post. The dashing is really handy here. I can't sit out that. Even though he looks kind of like Napalm Man, he functions very differently. He doesn't really deal that much damage to me via his projectiles, however. Instead of two, it should be three at minimum. By defeating him, I acquired the Soft Serve Seeker. Sickle Woman it is. Last up will be Chimera Man. And you're right, Snivy. The Soft Surf Seeker is a pretty good name. Let me try out my other weapons too, I forgot to do that earlier. That was the Drift. Can't pierce, sadly. I guess it's better against unshielded foes. Meanwhile, this locks out enemies. And temporarily freezes them as well. That's cool. No pun intended there. He thinks I made that section too easy. Is that a Kitsune? Ah, that's good. The dev of this game showed up. Welcome to stream, Jade Forger. If I didn't have the dash boots, 
that opening section will be a lot tougher, especially as those Yambos can fire those sonic booms or sonic waves. So I advise either having the soft surf seeker or the dash boots before going through the stage. I don't really have a problem with how much health the bosses have, more about how much damage the bosses deal to me. It feels almost every boss should deal at least 1-2 to two points of extra damage. Oh, missed that. And all the stages feel shorter than I'd like. You have a point there, Daibumen. Outside the white-haired wizards, the Joes, and the Joe right armors, there's an overabundance of fragile enemies. Fun boss battle, but as with Creamery Man, her attacks deal too little damage. Those minor shots, for instance, should deal at the very least 3 or 4. By defeating her, I got the laser sickle. So last but not least is Chimera Man. So apparently, this fan game was made under a strict time limit of about 3 months. Ah, oh, look at that, a mini dog. That explains why all the levels so far feel too short. And because of this, most gimmicks don't have enough time in the spotlight to shine. What's this? New Yoko gimmicks? Uh... Squid on plus hot dog plus whale? This stage is called Chimera Man after all. There is a Tomadera in the mix, too. Let's try our new weapon. I suppose this is a piercing weapon.
It is. A long range piercing option at that. So it's doubly as good. In fact, if I use it at short range, it may be weaker too. Better to use it at medium range. By placing the platform here, it's pretty easy to destroy the mini-boss. That's it. I hope this is not it. That's the end of the stage. Out of all the stages so far, this felt the shortest. It should have been... preferably twice as long. What was the main gimmick of this stage anyways? Even with the Chimera enemies, there wasn't enough variety in them. Well, the Chimera enemies, as well as the Chimera Yokus. Based on the fact he's using leaves as a shield, he's probably weak to the sickle. Goodbye. You lasted the longest out of the bunch. Hi, Parawizen. Looks like a lot more people are showing up. By defeating him, I acquired the Amalgam Inferno. One last visit to the shop. Sadly, you won't acquire this. Let's grab an M tank and a few more E tanks. So, off to Sheepman's Castle. You gotta make over. Uh, I prefer the original non remix track. The boss wasn't really that hard either. But to emphasize, that stage was simply too short. It needed to be at least twice as long, or at the very least 50% longer. There need to be more uses of both the Chimera Yokus and the Chimera enemies. Sorry, I'm having a hard time pronouncing Chimera today.
Do honey? I didn't expect to encounter Chimera bots. A pretty straight, straightforward pattern. <laughs> FYI, Mega Man Sunrise was made within a week. That's why I'm always less harsh against his flaws. Two months, got it. What? And here I thought they had unlimited range, as long as they hit a ceiling. And our next Chimera bot is... Nitro Strike. Close one there. Look at that, I have 60 tanks now. Out of all the weapons currently in the game, one of my favorite ones is the Parabolic Charge, due to its firing angle and how it acts like the Grab Buster. Chimera Bot number 3 is Torch to Bounce, who looks like a Fire Jester. One more should do the trick. Fun ideas. The highlights were the Chimera Boss for sure. The rest of the stage was... Simply Dare. They reused some of the gimmicks from The Wild Fortress in 10 and so many interesting configurations. I wish we had the Sheepman blocks, however.
Hello again, Kitsune. Space Joes? Is this foreshadowing going into space? Um, we already defeated all of you before. Let's use special weapons. When I say special weapons, I just mean the Rocket Buster. Is that what I think it means? Three matches already? And here I thought we have at least one more Wally for this level. So the preceding few screens were the rematches against all the mini-bosses. Let's do this in counterclockwise order. First up is Spiral Man, I mean. Let's test our weaknesses. Maybe it's a sickle? It is. I guessed out of the blue here because I had no idea what could beat Spirals. Sickle Woman. Let's try it all of them. No. Looks like it's fire. And here I thought Creamery Man would be weak to fire. Chimera Man, we already know that Sickle Woman is weak to fire, so... Decent. Not good. Can a Sickle pierce? It can. No, it can't. I found a weakness. It even temporarily freezes him in place. Traction Woman. Sickle? Yep, looks to be a sickle. Or maybe it's her secondary weakness. Um... No, I didn't mean to use that. Oops. Spiral? It's the spiral. I don't get the logic behind this. Creamery Man. Fire? Maybe the P-Charge? That's gonna be awkward tame. It is the P-Charge. I thought it'd be the fire weapon or the drifting weapon, which means that Super Woman must be weak to the drifting weapon. Yep.
Here comes a sheep capsule. He didn't try crushing me. It's alright if I fall here. This battle is looking neat. Sure, I'll try it at once. Apparently it acts like a good weapon to certain enemies. Wow, definitely his weakness. However, I'll be fair to him and not use it. It's just like using the Beetle Jet against Dr. Matt's capsule in Roko-chan. What are you? Upgraded sheep man? Doctor sheep? No. Are you Sheepman X? Ah, uh, the digital missiles. I still don't know how to reliably dodge them. Bye, Sheepman X. Your plans of world domination have been thwarted. It's time for your yearly shearing. And thus ends Mega Man Ram, a fairly short 8-bit Mega Man Classic fan game. Oh look, Buster's tanked twice in the credits. So, here are my overall thoughts on the fan game. Graphics and music were nice. They weren't what I consider to be good, but they get the job done. Design-wise, I have mixed feelings about. I want to preface all my statements with the fact that this game was made within a strict time limit of about 3 months. So of course, things aren't going to be as good as a fan game made within several years. All the levels felt too short, and because of that, they did not have enough time to put the gimmicks and enemies in the spotlight. This affected some stages more than others. For example, Chimera Man. All stages, at the very least, should be 50% longer, and have proper climaxes. Which brings me to my next point, the bosses. I liked all the boss patterns, however, I feel most of their attacks should deal more damage to Mega. 
both the projectile and contact damage. Otherwise, it's too easy to simply damage tank through them. See for instance, Sickle Woman and Creamery Man. I feel there's also an overabundance of relatively fragile enemies. In terms of weapon set, it was okay. The Telford Phaser was fun to use as a replacement for the Rush Coil, and I liked how you could use it as an offensive weapon as well. The Rocket Buster was straight up an upgrade to the regular Mega Buster, outside of probably some weakness affiliations. I didn't get to try out the Pierce Buster, but I suppose it would destroy Mats and other shielded foes. Data Sprawl was a pretty good short range weapon, although it is risky with tougher foes. The Parabolic Charge was easily my favorite special weapon of the game due to both its firing angle and how it acts like the Grab Buster when it impacts a foe. The S-Drift, eh, one of my least favorite weapons. You have to be at ground level to use it, and unfortunately, it doesn't pierce to enemies. The l Sickle was a pretty decent piercing weapon. If there were more guarded foes in the game, I'd use it more often. Malgam Inferno was a decent choice as well, when you had enemies who were just above or below you. Last but not least, Soft Star Seeker was also a decent pick which I should have used more. Homing weapons are always a treat to have in these Mega Man games, especially when they're paired with the ability to freeze enemies in place. In short, my main issue with the game is that it feels as if everything went by too quickly. The stages, enemies, and bosses. Only exceptions probably being the battles against Chimera Man and the final boss. It poses a lot of interesting ideas, but it needs more time to fully explore them properly. So overall, i say that this is an okay fan game. Taking into consideration the strict time limit, however, I'd rate this as being a decent one. I recommend you at least take a look at it. It's usually on the easier side, so it'd be pretty good for beginners. Well then, I hope you all enjoyed my live let's play of Mega Man Ram viewers, and thank you for making the game J8-Bit. If you enjoyed it, please rate, comment, favorite, and or subscribe, as they all help out the channel. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter as well, and join my Discord server, as I regularly post updates there. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you all in a future Let's Play.